This is Adrian. During my studies on the terrestrial snails Helix pomatia and Helix aspersa, I had the opportunity to capture some very interesting aspects of their life on film pictures that I would like to share them with you. Uh, why study the snails? Well, they're pretty economical from the agricultural point of view, ecological, and uh, they uh, turned out to be very good converters of the perennial plants uh, into animal protein. They're also very good candidates for the extraterrestrial farming. So let's see what they have to say. Many archaeological sites revealed the fact that terrestrial snails possibly represented a good source of food for humans since prehistoric times. Today, gourmet restaurants offer snail dishes at reasonable prices. Found fresh or canned in gourmet food stores, snails take a place of honor on upper shelves at eye level. Snail meat is very nutritious. But collecting snails from nature negatively affects the ecosystem. Known to be excellent bioaccumulators, snails collected from nature can often be contaminated with very toxic chemicals, including heavy metals. For these reasons, snail farming in controlled hygienic environments is highly recommended. For improving farming efficiency and snail meat quality, several experiments were conducted. Some aspects of snails' life, feeding behavior, and preferences were observed at different locations in Romania. Snails display a good appetite for a variety of plants, many perennial. The aim of the investigations was to identify, first of all, their plant preferences, not only for food choices, but for shelter as well. Leaf productivity and a plant's resistance to diverse weather conditions are important factors to be considered in designing future sites for edible terrestrial snail farming. Some of the plants may represent just stimulants for their appetite, or as we might call it, the salt and pepper of their life. The plant's diversity is a key factor in snail farming. As we can observe, the sharp hairs, called also trichomes, do not get in the snail's way. One of the most visited perennial plants is Lupinus polyphilus. Snails prefer this plant not only because of its nutritive value, but also because it represents good shade during sunny days and a good refuge from heavy rain. Horseradish, as we know it by its popular name, is one of their feed and shelter preferences. Common sorrel, or garden sorrel, regardless of the fact that it contains high levels of oxalic acid, is consumed very well by snails. The common sow thistle is part of their diet as well. Snails find common lavender a great comfortable place for just resting. They choose lavender over other existing plants around them, but without consuming it. Hyssop is also being just visited. Well-fed snails collected from the farm were exposed to a variety of plants while their activity was recorded by taking pictures every five seconds. The resulting film shows their behavior and food choices. A low appetite was noticed for garden sage, some appetite for sweet basil, some for rhubarb, some for fresh plum fruit. But let's not be surprised to witness a remarkable hunger for carrots. 
being sweet, juicy, and rich in beta carotene, B vitamins, C vitamins, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, iron, and other minerals, carrots are excellent food, especially for youngsters during their early development stages. Carrots assure a good intestinal transit, being also obvious color markers for experimental purposes. Without danger of drowning, terrestrial snails need to have unrestricted access to water, especially in the case of intense farming conditions when dry flour mix is being used as feed. Snails need to have constant access to fresh, juicy vegetal feed in order to assure a healthy intestinal transit and nutrient assimilation. Originating from a garden full of choices, the Helix pomarius snails were exposed to fennel. The snail was followed by camera really enjoying the novel fresh cut of fennel as its dessert. Taking its time, the snail made sure that there would be absolutely nothing left on its plate. The snail's teeth are very strong. Using a Ricoh CX-1 digital camera and with the help of digital image processing technology, it was possible not only to witness the feeding process, but also to measure, with a good approximation, the size of their teeth. The terrestrial snail consumes different fresh garden vegetables as well as plain soil where he finds his nutrients such as minerals, organic matter, and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Cellulose is consumed as well, being converted to organic matter by snails, making this way the terrestrial snails imperative, important for the ecosystems. Comfrey has proven to be one of the most wanted plants. The snails consume the leaves all the way to their veins. As a very resistant perennial plant, comfrey is still capable of producing flowers in order to reproduce by seeds. As it was mentioned before, the sharp hairs called trichomes do not represent an impediment for snails to crawl on, and that is due to viscous protective mucus which the snail produces. Furthermore, the trichomes are very nutritious and will not be left without the snail's proper attention. While they mean food for snails, the very sharp and hard trichomes prove to be a real pain for the farmer or researcher. The comfrey has other herbivore visitors as well. Here the snail found another source of trichomes. The sunflower is used by farmers as vegetal feed for snails. The combination of mixed flour and vegetable feed assures that the snails have proper digestive functions. The trichomes are also heavily present on the leaves and leaf nerves of burdock. Proper humidity, temperature, and nutrition are factors that the snail's growth and development depend upon. Intense snail farming requires proper and often expensive establishments to protect the snails from extreme weather conditions. 
Asbestos plates are not recommended. Such activity can present a very dangerous food chemical risk factor for humans. As in any ecosystem, the terrestrial snails also have their enemies. The sylphide larva is one of the most common enemies. It bites the leg of the snail a few times. In order to defend from the larva's attack, the snail generates abundant thick mucus, leading this way to the snail's dehydration. In a relatively short time, advanced dehydration will conclude with the snail's death. One life ends, others begin. The courting process is very interesting at this hermaphrodite animal towards its reproduction. They need to get very well acquainted and often form groups of three competing individuals. Once the pair is established, copulation takes place for many hours. Under normal conditions, the results are eggs. Proper humidity and temperature of the ground are vital elements for the success of species perpetuation. If the temperature is too high and the humidity gets too low, the eggs will dry. As small as three millimeters, the eggs represent the potential new generation of terrestrial snails. The winners, the newly hatched snails, will enjoy the greens and drops of early morning dew. The unlucky, due to a variety of reasons, will not even become eggs. Being just a few days old, these snails are very small, measuring two to four millimeters, and are very fragile. With a transparent shell, the small snails offer the opportunity to observe their internal organs, such as their heart beating as we can visibly locate it at the posterior part of the shell. Having a low body weight but being energetic, the little snails are crawling at relatively high speeds of 4.15 to 5.65 meters per hour, as could be identified with the help of those images. Snails grow pretty fast under proper conditions, learning to share their resources in a friendly way. Not just the carrot or the orange color, but also the green of this planet. And when times get tough on them, they know how to limit their consumption by going into hibernation.